people, welcome to Kids Rock tonight. I'm Betty Blue, and I'm so glad to see all of you again this week. All month long, we've been talking about integrity. Who remembers what integrity is? That's right, yes! Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It means that you drop the act. You stop pretending to be someone you're not. You choose to be honest and truthful in every way as you choose to follow God with your words and your actions. Oh wait, I almost forgot I was wearing this. It's actually for today's super fun game, which is about revealing the truth, but animal edition. You're going to see on the screen four different animal masks, one of which is like this. It represents the four different answers, but only one of those answers will be true. I'll read out the trivia questions about the animals along with the four potential answers. On the screen, you'll see the animal mask that represents each answer. And when you know which one is true, shout out the name of the animal mask that you think is true. Let's see how many you can get right. Okay, it's time to play. Okay, here's the first animal trivia question. What are baby goats called? Cubs, kids, foal, foals, or pups? Who shouted out bear? That's right, the bear mask has the right answer. It's kids. Okay, here's another one. How far away can a wolf smell its prey? Nearly four miles? nearly one mile, nearly two miles, or nearly half a mile. I would think it was nearly four miles, but the correct answer is nearly two miles. That's still way more than me. Oh, here's a good one about bees. Bees are found on every continent except for which one? Which is it? Australia, North America, Antarctica, or South America? Did someone say Antarctica? That's right, you cannot find bees in Antarctica. All right, next question is question number four. A newborn kangaroo is about the size of a, hmm, this is a really tricky question, watermelon, a lima bean, a plum, or a grapefruit. Sometimes babies come out really big and other times they come out really small. Wait, I think I heard someone shout lima bean. Was that you? Well, if it was you, you are correct. They are the size of a lima bean. Wow, that's really small. Speaking of small, our next question is all about the smallest mammal in the world. Which one of these mammals is the smallest in the whole world? Is it a bumblebee bat, a numbat, a pygmy marmoset, or a western harvest mouse? It is, it's a bumblebee bat. Actually, I have a picture of one. I can't believe they're so tiny. Well, going from small to a lot bigger, let's talk about sharks. All right, which organ makes up to 25% of a shark's total body mass? Could it be the stomach or the kidney? Maybe it's the heart or the liver. Well, the correct answer is the animal mass, that's right, it's the liver. Wow, I did not know that fact about sharks. Okay, let's move on to this trivia question about tigers. At most, how many pounds of meat can a tiger eat at one time? What do you all think? Let's find out. It's da -da -da -da, 88 pounds. Wow, that's like drinking about 10 gallons of milk. Whoa. Okay, just a few more questions to go. Egrets and other birds perch on rhinos because they get, their wings get tired or they get lonely or predators can't attack them or they feed on parasites. Ooh, I bet it's because their wings get tired. What do you think? No, no? Okay, okay, let's find out. Oh, it's because they feed on parasites. Who knew? 
not me. Okay, if you have a cat at your house, maybe they can help you with this question. What percentage of a cat's bones are in its tails? What did your cat say? Oh, they said 10%? Oh, well, your cat is right! That's correct, it's 10%. Here's our second to last question, ready? What are female elephants called? Lionesses, cows, hens, or ewes? If you guessed the bear mask and said cows, you are correct! I am learning so much here today. Okay, final question, ready? What color is a polar bear's skin? And I'll give you a hint. It's not white. If you guess the bear mask, black, you're right. A polar bear's skin is actually black. Yes, you can Google that because I did. Well, great job, friends. Who got them all right? I know some of you did. Some of you are super animal trivia experts. And what you didn't know before, you know now, so that's something to celebrate. Let's keep celebrating as we stand up and sing and dance together. Dark is run and hide, you bring the broken back to life. Only you can, only you can. You set me free from every chain, you fill my heart with songs of praise. Only you can, only you can. Jesus, you're the only reason that I'm even breathing. I am wide awake. My heart beats. You left the glory of your throne to bring this runaway back home. Only you can, only you can. You give me love, you give me life, you keep me dancing through the night. Only you can, only you can. My heart beats. Great job dancing and singing along to every beat. Okay, let me get out my Bible. This one's a little smaller than the one from the other week. All right, we often think about the Bible as a book, but that's not the full story. 
Who knows why? Yeah, it's a collection of books, 66 books actually, and many of these books were originally written as letters. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote letters to the people who had put their faith in Jesus in the towns where he had helped start new churches. Paul wanted to encourage the people who lived in the city of Philippi, so he sent them a letter, which we call the Book of Philippians. You see, life wasn't exactly easy for the believers in Philippi, but life wasn't easy for Paul either. In fact, he wrote this letter to the Philippians from prison. Paul hadn't done anything wrong, but he had been put in prison for telling people all about Jesus. You think he might be feeling sad or angry or discouraged, right? We imagine Paul would feel that way because, well, it's natural for us to focus on what is happening to us right now. It's also natural for us to feel afraid of what might happen next. If things are hard or challenging, we tend to focus on that, don't we? Kind of like Darth Vader. We might feel sad or angry or nervous. And if we do, it's really important for us to feel those feelings. But if we're not careful, we can spend all our time just thinking about everything that's wrong in our lives. But there's a better way. It means that we have to look differently at the things that are happening in our lives. Paul told the Philippians how to do it, and we can do the same thing too. Here's what Paul wrote in his letter. Check it out. All right. Philippians 4, 8. Here we go. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, Think about those kinds of things. Here's Yoda. Instead of thinking only about the bad, we should focus on the good. And, well, what is the good? Let's read that verse together again. And you all shout out the good things that Paul said to look for. Ready? Okay, Philippians 4 8. Here we go again. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. What do you see in this verse? What do you hear? What can we focus on? That's a pretty great list in here, isn't it? So I wonder, how would our lives change if we chose to focus on things like this? Let's think about a few examples. Maybe math isn't your thing or whatever subject it is that just stresses you out. Maybe it's social studies, reading, writing. Maybe you have a big test coming up and all you can think about is how you just don't understand what to do. And the more you think about the test and the hard questions, the more anxious you get. Hmm. What if instead you focus on the things you do understand. What if you did a few practice problems of the things you understand to help you remember that 
you are good at that subject. And what if you looked around to see who might be able to help you with the harder stuff? You'll likely find a parent or a caregiver, an older sibling, or even your teacher who would be willing to spend some extra time with you to help you understand. If you choose to have a positive attitude and look around for help, you can turn a bad situation into something good. Or how about, how about screen time? Your parents or caregivers probably give you a limit on that. And maybe you think it's not long enough. Every time the timer goes off or they tell you your time is up, you get mad and frustrated. Maybe you even shout that it's not fair. Oops. <laughs> but what if you thought about all the things you can do without your, a screen? Maybe you could play a board game with your friend or sibling or why not go for a bike ride? Or even just sit outside and look at the birds and trees. Maybe you could write a play or a song or draw or paint. Maybe you could do all those things. I bet you'll feel a lot better and you'll be respecting your grown-ups rules too. Which, by the way, they're putting in place in order to help you. Let's think about one we've all experienced. Remember when we couldn't leave our homes a few months ago? Yeah, I remember. It was really hard, wasn't it? It was hard for me. We missed our friends. We missed out on fun events. And some of you might have even had a birthday during that time, but you couldn't have a party. Or even worse, some of you might have known someone who got sick. Looking back on that time, it would be easy to only remember what was difficult or frustrating or sad. But what if we looked at that time in our lives another way? What are some true, noble, lovely, and excellent things that happened during that time? Or as a result of that time? Maybe you got to spend a lot of time with your family. Or maybe things really slowed down for you, and that was good. Or you learned some new hobbies, or you watched a lot of fun movies. Maybe you played way more board games, or you even came up with your own game. I know that I came to appreciate my friends a lot more during that time, and even got to connect with some old friends that I hadn't talked to in a really long time through Zoom. Here's the thing. When we look at life the way Paul talked about in his letter, it doesn't mean that things aren't hard or that they won't be hard in the future. But when we choose to focus on what's good in our lives and what God is doing, it allows us to see even the bad things in a whole new way. We can always remember what's true about God. He loves us and he's always with us. He'll be there to help us through the tough times, no matter what. You and I can choose to do this. Focus on what's true. When we think that way, we can have joy even when times are hard. 
We can focus on how good God is and how God is working in our lives every single day. Then we'll see the world in a more truthful way. Let's ask God to help us focus on what's good, what's right, and what's true. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us so many true, lovely, and excellent things to focus on. We know that you've given us these things, but we have to choose to set our minds on them. Please help us do that. Give us eyes to see the world as you see it, seeing what's good and true, no matter what the situation we're in. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's so cool how the way we think has so much to do with our integrity. We make the wise choice when we set our minds on what's good, right, noble, and worthy of praise. We can choose to focus on what's true. That God made us, God loves us, and God has a good plan for our lives. Then we'll be able to see the good that's all around us. Say this with me. Focus on what's true. It can be hard for us to do that when life doesn't go the way we want it to. I mean, think about Jesus' disciples. When Jesus died on the cross, it seemed like the worst thing that could possibly happen. They couldn't see how it was part of God's plan. But when Jesus came back to life, they realized that God's plan was good in the end. And that's why it's so important for us to think in a truthful way. Living with integrity means not only being truthful, but also focusing on what is true. If you choose to look for the good, the true, and excellent things, you'll find them all around. Well, until next time, this is Betty Blue saying bye-bye.